Note to self, do not go on Twitter straight after game when people are still full of wrath. I'd been looking forward to this match. I had, because this week, you've seen previous video, I said this was going to be a big week for us, and I thought if we could take six points out at nine, that would put us in a good place. As it is, we've took five, and that's that's not horrific, actually, but it feels disappointing because of the manner of it, just taking a point when we dominated first half. But I've got to be honest with you, as first half were going on, I'd got two things in my mind, that, because I'd watched two games. I'd watched Plymouth game against Leicester last night. I watched Leeds game this morning. And they both took on a very similar pattern to what I saw at Hillsborough. Leicester, they had all up ball against Plymouth. They, they never looked like breaking them down, really. Apart from that, Jules Biol, he's a good player. Plymouth just stacked with men behind the ball, worked the nuts off. But of course Leicester, as happens when you've got all men in opposition, are susceptible to counter and that's what happened. And then I watched Leeds against Blackburn this morning. I thought, oh, maybe Leeds can do us a favour there. Um, it's never comfortable, that is it, watching Leeds and hoping they get a result. But again, same pattern. They dominated the ball. They actually look more likely to score a goal than Leicester did last night. But again, Blackman defending in numbers. Some brilliant saves by uh, their goalkeeper, Blackman, by the way. Uh, they did rather look a little bit that pairs in net. Familiar name, and I thought he was, so I've had a little check. And he were, it was his dad who played for Middlesbrough when I was a kid. He played about 400 games for them. So they rolled the look a bit, but again... Leeds piling on, quick break, done. So I'm, you know, we're going into the Stoke match today, and I just oh, I know we're going to have more at ball. They're not going to come here and play an open, expansive game. So I just hope we can get that goal. Anyway, I'm mumbling on. Let's get on with team news. Wednesday, Beadle in goal. Back three, Palmer, Ahekwe and Fameo. Valentin and Johnson, wing-backs. Volks and Bannon in midfield. And Windass supporting Ubo and Smith up front. Although I've got to say, it was a lot more fluid than that. Windass were popping out on right-hand side a lot. But just for a basic idea, anyway, there we go. The visitors, Iverson in goal. Wilmot, McNally, Rowles and Thompson at the back. Baker, one, one time Wednesday Lowney and Berger in the middle. Laron Haksabanovic. Haksaban. Haksabanovic. Haksabanovic. Oh, that's it. It's dead easy when you can do it, isn't it? Haksabanovic. Why don't I say that at the start? Because I didn't read it before I started opening my gob. And that's the problem, isn't it? And Leris. On the right hand side. Campbell up front, son of uh, Arsenal striker Kevin Campbell. Good team on paper, that. Couple of changes. Obviously, Palmer into the back line and Volks in midfield. Windass starting again. One, one or two question marks that are quite in last game, but I, I thought he's had a decent first half today. Obviously, he's not fully up to match speed. I've, I've seen he's took a bit of a slagging tonight, but I thought he had a decent first half. And I've got to be honest, I thought he was involved in our best moments in first half. And it was a really good start from Wednesday. Got at him from off. Four minutes in, Windass drifted out to that right-hand side. I know, I know in that... Um, team graphic that I've just done yeah I don't know I'm sorry I didn't do my cheesy 80s graphics that you like but I couldn't really be asked to be honest with you um, 
I know according to Babe, it said he was playing in all, and he sort of was, but at times they were spreading it out like a, a front three, Ugg ball drifting out to the left, Windass to the right, and that was first real good opportunity, Windass drifted out, fantastic cross into the box for Ugg ball. Arrives, I'm not going to slag him off too much, Ugg ball, because I think he does the right thing, he tries to keep it down, important thing there is, is not to spank it off at bar, he tries to guide it with his left foot, uh, and it's a good point blank save from their keeper, really. Um, he should probably score, but I think he goes about it in the right way. A couple of minutes after that, another great chance. He's just He just gets helped on back into the box. I think it's Volks. Smith turned. He does well. It's a difficult technique, that, because it's coming down with snow on it, you know, and he, he manages to turn and get a toe to it. It's bar. That's twice in two games that we've with it bar now and like I said a lick of paint could be all difference come end of the season uh, but Wednesday started well piling on thought Valentin were looking really sharp down right hand side thought he were linking well with Palmer and Windass thought that were an outlet for us and I generally thought a goal were going to come nine minutes and we did have ball in net Set pieces have been a lot better the last two games or so. Whipped in, Smith gets up really well, towered in header, free kick to them. Windass tangling with keeper, I think. I can't see any other reason for it. I mean, it's a bit soft, but that's easy. You know, days in that loft house, taking two centre halves and goalkeeper into the back it. They're long gone, aren't they? They didn't really muster an attack till about 15, 20 minutes into the game and uh, ball on inside left channel, got got their left winger in. Except he weren't in because Beadle were brilliant. He come flying off his line, diagonally out. Again, brave. That's probably about three or four times this week he's come out at, at somebody's feet. Uh, and in, in that sense, he's really impressed me. Because some keepers, you know, they're great shot stoppers and what have you, but they can be a bit nesh when it comes to that side of it. But he's not afraid to get down there among studs him. And probably they didn't really have another chance till probably just before break they got a free kick on left that got whipped into the box and it's an absolute crowd scene in there. And I couldn't see who'd got ball, who, who was swinging legs here and how he just scruffy. Um, and eventually goes behind for the goal kick. But it'd been a, an half a Wednesday domination. Half opportunities, really. Um, but sort of opportunities that have plagued season. There's a couple of minutes into the second half. There's a stop in play. Wednesday put a cross into the box. Their keeper comes for it. And he, um, he scuffs his own lad on back of head. And he went down. Uh, and he, he was down for ages on it. I thought, it weren't that bad. We just shows you can never tell, can you? I think it was more to do with, I think he probably twisted his neck more than actually a, a clout on head. So you were down for about four or five minutes. They had to make a change, you know, which disrupted sort of rhythm of play in that first five minutes. They got a free kick. Um, Baker, he flashed that about a foot wide. Volks had gone in with a bit of a daft free kick to give away, actually. I think Wednesday were frustrated, you know, after that stopping play, because I think they were hoping to sort of start second half like they'd started first half and then get a bit of momentum and a bit of tempo to play. Um, and like I said, that were really a sign of things to come because the second half, the referee, he barely had whistle out of his gob, but it was every two minutes. Baz gets pulled down, blatant foul. There were a lot of, like I said, there were a lot of. A lot of fouls today, a lot of free kicks, and it just disrupts rhythmic game. Volks put a, a tremendous free kick in you know, the ball diving header just wide, and like I said again, they're not really clear opportunities, but they're them sort of half opportunities that when you're a side that's full of confidence, you, you probably put them away, you know. When you're on a little streak, you know, if you think about Ugg ball. A month ago when he first come in and he had that little goal streak, you know, what it five in six or whatever it were. If that free kick goes in when he's during that little run, 
he, he probably buries it. When does he actually get out of jail? Uh, heck, we, it's a suicidal back pass. Um, for Mayo, looks like he's not going to quite have legs to get there. The beadle comes out. I think he just manages to get his toe end at ball, which is a good job because he absolutely goes through there, lad, after, he, after he's nudged it away. Um, and, but that would, again, that would him having to come heading out because Wednesday were pushed really high up and that's where, the, like I said, I would have these flashbacks of Leicester and Leeds pushing high up and, and dominating ball and, and then getting caught out. So there were warning signs there. Wednesday do take the lead just after that and it's, Baz just pumps it forward, it sort of gets knocked out to left, Baz just pumps one into the box. Hequi does really well, gets up, heads it back down and Palmer's got in there, joining attack, absolutely fantastic strike, fantastic. I've seen so many of them over the years at Hillsborough that have sort of bobbled down in that sort of area that's nearly it back at stand or gone over at roof. Um, just gets above it, creams it on half volley, right into the far post, brilliant strike, great goal. And I was just thinking, I hope that settles us a bit. Because, as I said, after break, it had been a bit more raggedy. Lots of stopping and starting, lots of whistles, free kicks. Um, and, and there weren't that flow that they'd been in the first half. So I was just hoping this goal would settle us down a bit. You know, you've got something to defend, it's a scraggy game. And it's one of them things in it, as soon as you score a goal, let's just keep it calm for 10 minutes. Let's just, you know, not go mad. But that equaliser, we get absolutely torn open. It, it's a ball in. I don't know if it's a heck we have for Mayo. Sort of half and half challenge. I think he's thinking he can step in front of man. Then as it's coming in, I think realising he can't get in front of him. But then you're very tight anyway. And it's a little flick ball around the corner. Uh, Palmer's sprinting to get back in I don't know where Valentin is and uh, their substitute Kundal is just uh, come on and tucked it in the corner and it's an absolute hammer blow it's an absolute hammer blow they look a bit boosted for goal actually it's really it's really lifted Stoke because before like I said first half thought Wednesday were well on top if any team were going to score a goal probably going to be us second half like I said been very bitty um, but that goal definitely lifted them. Uh, suddenly that Campbell was seeing a lot more at ball. Uh, very physical, good at holding it up. Uh, that Juno, he, he had an opportunity. In, just inside box, came to him. He had about two or three touches, I think that's what concerned me. Uh, two or three touches, cracked a shot, it was flying in. And luckily for us, it's hit one of their lads and gone wide. 90th minute. Ugh, big, fantastic ball into the box. It's dropping down back stick. And, but it's the angle. The angle just favours defender more than it favours attacker. You, you know, you're attacker, you're coming. You're, there's a direction you've got to edit to try and score a goal. Defender's in that sort of position where he's just got to get his head on it and it, it stops a goal. But he still does really well. Heads it out from under the bar. And it's just... You just know, don't you? You just get that sort of sinking feeling. It, it'd been a very stop-start game. Uh, Wednesday. Not too many ideas in second half. Um... We could have. I'm, I'm reluctant to be negative because I don't think it's needed at this stage of the season. But Windass came off. I thought he were tiring and starting to look a bit leggy, even though I thought there were some good flashes in the first half. Um, but I just would have liked to have seen us have another option to come on and. and Try and make some more of them passes in that last sort of third. Thought we got a little bit predictable what we were trying to do. And I can't help but look and think 
that sort of position between midfield and attack, I can't help but looking at that and thinking, if you've got somebody like George Byers on bench, you know, 25 minutes to go, you, you're trying to unlock opposition defence and, and you just need somebody who can get in there and little cute passes, but also that ability to, to push on from a deeper position and, and support attack. I think that might that sort of player might have been a, a better option. Um, like I said, I think we've got a little bit one-dimensional. But, you know, if buts and maybes, you know, there's no point in me harping on about a, a player that's uh, not playing with us anymore. But that sort of player, I would have liked to have like us to have had that sort of option for bench, somebody who could just come in and link things a little bit more. Um, the bizarre thing, Danny did look like he was going to make about three or four subs at end uh, and kept delaying it. And, you know, we've got, we got a series of long throws and corners and I can only think he didn't make them because he thought, oh, I'll, I'll keep certain lads on for these because they know whereabouts are going to be because they've probably been practicing them all week so they know where they should be and sometimes I don't think subs are listening you know when coaches there with clipboard and don't forget when we're doing this you're doing that and I think they're just like yeah yeah get me on you know so there might have been a bit of that that you wanted people who were you know, been involved in practice for this game all week or whatever yeah. but that said sometimes I think a little bit of chaos theory makes a difference doesn't it the number of goals I've seen over years for teams in famous victories where they've, they've talked about it after and Oh, you put a great free kick in there, or you you swung that vital corner in, and it's like, oh yeah, that, well I weren't going to be taking it, but uh, so and so with that knack, and he couldn't be asked to run over and take it. And it, but sometimes a little bit, of, like I say, a little bit of chaos, a little bit of some that some plan can sometimes work for you, can it? I don't know why I'm so down. Like I said at the beginning of the week, I looked at it: QPR, Norwich, Stoke. And I said, if we can take six points, I think that'd be good. We've took five. Which isn't that bad a return, I don't think, all things considered. But I think because other results haven't gone our way, it, it's brought this, this gloom sort of thing. Um, and other results really haven't gone our way. Full results then. Plymouth won. Leicester nil, Bundu in 21st minute. And another team at top of the table struggling to get past a relegation threat inside. Leeds United nil, Blackburn won. Birmingham City, um, bad result for Wednesday really. 3 0 winners over Coventry, bit of a derby there. Maybe that's, what, uh, maybe that's what's made difference there. Form guide out at Winder. Hull 3, QPR 0, Tufan, Carvalho and Philogene Bidic, Bidic, um, Bidic, his name's that long, I couldn't even fit number on, and Millwall, Millwall 3, Cardiff 1, Oberfemi, Cooper and Watmore, I mean Millwall, new manager bounce, then they fell off a cliff and now back on form again, and the final one, Bristol City 1, Huddersfield won. A late goal for Huddersfield there. Looked like all three points. And then Naki Wells has popped up penalty in the 100th minute of that game. Um, actually does Wednesday a big favour. Let's have a quick look at the table. Oh, God, the table. Well, Blackburn's win against Leeds puts them up onto 49 points. It's amazing that one win can put such a different complexion on things, isn't it? Plymouth Argyle with their win over Leicester, another struggling team getting a win over a team at top end at table. Um, although, as I said earlier, I wouldn't call them upsets. Uh, them teams at top are really starting to feel mental uh, pressure being exerted now as they get into the last legs of the season for promotion. QPR still on 47 points after that 3 0 away defeat at uh, Hull City. That point for Stoke today pushes them up onto 47. Birmingham City, that 
3-0 derby win over Coventry has really done them a massive favour, pulled them out from 23rd, leapfrog Wednesday and Huddersfield, um, and Huddersfield's point keeps them level ahead of us on goal difference. So we'll go on another week, just got to look at winning our own games haven't we, and uh, Blackburn next Sunday be a huge game. I wish it weren't on Sunday because I do feel like that's going to have added pressure, you know, if depending on results have gone day before. Um, Birmingham, I've got Rotherham, so I can't see up but a Birmingham win. I mean, Rotherham have hardly been able to buy a point all season. Um, and Uddersfield at home against Swansea, just got to hope Swansea can dig a result out of here. And I know... I know you shouldn't rely on other teams doing you a favour and you've got to win your games, but them playing the day before, I, th I do think it adds that bit of pressure to us. Um, Blackburn, as I said, I watched them against Leeds. Um, I, I did think they rolled the look a bit, but again, dangerous on break. On Wednesday night, points more than they do, so... Us dominating ball and, and allowing them to counter attack, it's you know, I think that's really going to play into their hands. On the other hand, we can't go there and, and sit back because we need points. So, I think the style and the type of the game that it's probably going to end up being probably suits Blackburn more than it suits Wednesday. But we're getting to the stage now where we ain't got a choice in matter, we, you know, we've got to go for it and then. You've just got to trust them lads at back that they can sort of almost man for man stand up to be counted against whatever they've got to offer when they when they break against you. Well, it's going to be a, a tough weekend. Tough weekend. Man at match. <sighs> got to do one because I don't want to be a mardy ass about it. I thought Smith had a very good game. Um, would have been a better game if that shot had gone in that it bar. But overall, I thought that was a really good centre forward performance. One headers, helped ball up, made it stick. Um, involved in all good stuff we did in first half. Really, um, thought he had a very good game. Um, thought Palmer had a good game. Uh, not even including goal, I thought first half he played really well, it was available, really pushing on forward as well from where he was positioned. Um, and like I said, although he's took a, a slagging, I thought probably three or four at brightest moments in, in first half when we looked like better team, I thought that would actually come from Windus. So, you know, he faded massively, but you know, he's been out for a long time and... Uh, Match sharp is a bit different to, you know, match fit, if you know what I mean, so. But yeah, man at match, uh, Michael Smith, I think. I tell you, I won't get me man at match this weekend. That bloody Vout face, or whatever he's called, at place for Leicester. Terrible defending for that guy. That ball gets played out there to that bundle, and honestly, he, he makes no attempt. He jogs, he jogs out there. Bloody poor man's David Louise with air. Even if you don't think he can make ball, if he gets his legs on, he's there to he's there to affect him on his first touch. But he doesn't. He, he jogs out, and then he just backpedals into his own box for twenty yards. Terrible. And then he sort of goes down and one. Terrible defending. Terrible defending. I've got to stop watching other teams because that's that's. That's stressing me almost as much as watching Wednesday. We're still in it though. We're still in fight. Which, at one time at season, you know, I wouldn't have thought we would be. We now were talking with lads at work at one point and we were genuinely saying, do you think we'll have three points by Christmas? That's how bad it were. You know, at least now we are attacking teams. At least now we are creating some chances. 
at least now we are getting shots on target you know they're not always going in but at least we've made a fist of it which is about best you can say for it you know we go remember that when, remember when we went three matches without having a shot uh, anyway got to stick with it get behind lads at Blackburn which I know that everybody will I know f support's going to be fantastic down there and if team on pitch can do half as well we've got a chance as I said I suspect the type of game it's going to be and, and rhythm of that game is probably going to suit them it's going to make a fist of it though 